Welcome to the Matt Beck Podcast. Woke up this way. He's got a lot of cool stuff he's going to show you today. The latest news, industry topics, and business tips. For all hairstylists and salon owners, it's time to flip the script. Grab your precision scissors, barber combs, and swivel twist razors. Let's cut a bob, a quick shag, pixie cut with a little bit of flavor. Check out the live classes, product reviews, let's rock on. Don't forget to check out freesaloneducation.com. I woke up this way. It's going to be a great day. Chop it, clip it, spray it, flip it. I woke up this way. It's gonna be a great day. What's up, guys? Chop it, clip it, spray it, flip Welcome to it. the new Let show. show the and if any of you guys were on here live yesterday, uh, you saw my excitement. Well, maybe not, because we went almost two hours of live, and it was fun because it was an experiment, and uh, and that's where this show kind of was born. So. Uh, Really, really excited to to launch this new thing, uh, this new venture. What this is going to be is a um, like a live request show. So I've got videos lined up. Uh, I took some of your requests yesterday and I put them into today. So I've got the first couple videos ready. Uh, what I want to see you guys doing is getting involved in the show. Share the show and also um, get involved in the chat. I'd like to see what what do you want to learn today? Um, I'm sure I have a video for you um, that I can pull up. Over the last six years, I've created over 900 education videos, and I've also partnered with some of the top brands in the industry and created education videos for them as well. So I've got a library of over 1,000 videos um, for you guys. So um, that's kind of where this show came from. So I uh, woke up this way. It's usually going to be a little bit earlier. Um, I've been preparing it all day, uh, trying to get everything kind of squared away and ready. Um, notice that you can, uh, text, uh, your request. You can also call in, leave a voice message of a request that you want to see maybe on this show, maybe on a later show. And then also you can comment. So make sure you're commenting. Uh, love it. Dry cutting curly hair, Rhonda. Uh, thanks for being here. Um, Donna, I see you on there. Um, I can see the chat. I can see the chat on everything. We're live on both Facebooks, uh, both of my Facebook channels, uh, free salon education and mine. Uh, and also on YouTube. So um, really excited to have you guys here. So what do you what do you guys want to see? I've got um, uh, a few things lined up. The first thing that we're going to go over uh, today is some people were requesting um, to see razor cuts. They also wanted to see some foiling techniques uh, and they wanted to see some uh, men's cuts. So we're definitely going to be getting into that. Uh, but what do you guys want to see? That's what it's all about. Um, we're going to be hanging out here for a little while, so um, jump in the chat, get involved, meet some new people, and uh, this is, to me, uh, kind of, I'm testing what a, what a hair show in the future would look like uh, when you can walk into a room and learn anything that you want to learn, uh, and we can share it. So, first video, um, I'm going to do, I'm going to share with you guys a foiling technique, because that's what uh, was requested right away uh, yesterday during the show. So I want to get that out there and then um, I'm going to let you guys kind of congregate and join in and then we will uh, we'll go from there. So here is a foiling technique. I want to show you guys. I got a couple lined up. This one is specifically to foil a fringe. It's a new way to do that. So I want to share with you guys that video and then um, keep the request coming. So here it is. The first video. Here you go. All right, guys, so to start off this technique, all right, guys, so to start off this technique, what I'm going to do is take a nice uh, soft diagonal forward parting, and then I'm going to weave through that. So what the weave does is it breaks it up, makes it a little softer. If I wanted a little bit more of a pop in the fringe, then I would go in with a slice, or I would do um, kind of crisscross, and I would do a slice, then a weave. It's really, you have a lot of freedom with this stuff, so don't take this just as literal as it is. Uh, and then what I do is I go in with my Paul Mitchell Synchro Lift Lightener. Uh, it's a powder lightener. I'm using 20 volume, uh, and I'm going to pack it into a foil. So I fold that foil up. I make sure I got heavy saturation on the section. I really make sure that I get the bottom of the section as well. And then I go through. I take another slice, and then I go through with a fine weave throughout it. Um, so this is a pretty simple technique. Now, the reason I'm calling this highlighting the fringe and what I'm really trying to create in this is a nice soft effect with the way that it falls. Sometimes if you just uh, put uh, foils throughout the top of the head and you do slices or you do horizontal, uh, what happens is you get very stripey look to it. 
So what I'm trying to create is a really soft um, effect when it falls. So I'll, you guys will see that in the end. So I go through just like I cut the hair. So when I cut the fringe, I did the same diagonal partings, brought everything over to the opposite side, and then I get a nice soft fall effect. So to me, because I'm a hair cutter, color transfers uh, very much to me in the same way that haircutting does. So the weight distribution, how hair moves. So I'm doing the same thing in this technique. So again, heavy saturation going about, uh, let's say an eighth of an inch from the scalp, maybe quarter of an inch from the scalp uh, at times. And I just paint that all the way through even saturation all the way to the ends. And you'll notice I go vertical with the brush, but then I go horizontal back and forth. That just helps move the hair around a little bit. I also like my lightener to be a little bit, um, wetter, I guess you could say, I don't know what word to use, but I like it to be a little bit more. So as I'm painting it on, I get better saturation on the hair, the drier, the lightener for me, it just doesn't spread as well. So that's a, another little tip for you guys on that. So I'm just going to continue working my way through. Now we're just working on the fringe. So what I would do is I'm, I'm going to take this all the way over to the corner of the eyebrow, the edge of the eyebrow. And that's where I'm going to stop this sectioning because anything from that point on becomes a little more stripey because of the head shape and how it moves. So what I would do is then go up horizontal from that point, from the temple up to the top. We're not going to do that today because I just wanted to show you the fringe highlight. But um, in the salon, if I wanted to add more highlights or I could even go in and just start doing some balayage on the rest of the hair, there's so many options, guys, in hair color. So don't feel like you're... That's why I like just showing this one little tip because I don't want you to think this is the only way to do it. I have to do it this way or it's not going to turn out the way I want know that there's many options to go in and do it. So uh, again, fine foil. Notice I'm at the edge of the eyebrow. This is about the point where I'm going to stop uh, after this foil. And then I'll go through and I can do something else. But in the end of this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you guys the end result. I'm also going to use uh, a new color from Paul Mitchell to tone with it. Um, it's a violet gold, which I'm really excited to share with you guys that. Uh, but the reason I only wanted to color the bang, not just for this small technique, but I also want you guys to be able to really visually see how this placement falls. And if I go through and do the whole thing, then you're going to see multiple different placements and how they fall and you won't really get a specific look at it. So uh, maybe I can show you guys the side. If you want to see that, let me know in the comments. I can show you how to do the side beyond this as well uh, in a different video. So we get to the edge of the eyebrow. This is going to be my last section. And then we'll go into the toning. So the processing time on this, I don't want you guys to stress about that either. You got to watch it. Anytime you're working with lightener, make sure it's not, there's no processing time. So you want to watch it, get it to the level that you're looking to work with. Uh, again, and we're also going to work a little weave into the side section as well. Um, just to the edge of the eyebrow though, not any further. Um, but back to the processing. So processing is really just up to you. Uh, you want to get it to a level where you can then deposit, right? So I think a lot of times we think of just, I want to get it to this pale yellow so that I can create this beautiful blonde with no brassiness. Well, if if your tone isn't that, if you're not trying to get it to a platinum, then you don't need to lift them that far. So underlying tones are not a bad thing. So as I'm lifting her, I'm thinking, well, what do I want to do? In my um end result, I'm trying to create a violet gold. So I don't really mind having a little bit more gold in it, but I just need to know that if I get extra gold when lifting her, that's going to also deposit into the tone that I'm creating with the violet gold. So I might have a little extra violet into it. So just know that um, you don't always have to overprocess. You don't have to lift super high as long as your end result mimics the, the level that you get to. So uh, I'll finish painting this section through and then I'm going to fold that up into a foil and we're going to let that process. Uh, for this video's sake, I did let it process for about 25 minutes and it was good to go. And then uh, we took her back to get her shampooed. So there's our foil. We fold that up, get it out of the guest face. And then you can see how that placement works through there. Now I'm going in with Paul Mitchell XG. Uh, 9VG, which is a violet gold. I love this toner. It creates a really nice, soft, sandy look to the hair. We paint that on her wet hair, and you can see the placement when she pulls it back. So if she goes to pull her hair back, it's not going to be stripey. And you can see how soft it is and how nice it moves across. So hope you guys like this video. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. All righty, all righty, all righty. 
So I hope you guys liked that video. I know it was just the fringe, but I got more foiling techniques coming up. But what I really wanted to share with you guys is that technique where you're taking the heavy side. So uh, Aaron was saying, do you pick the heavy side of the bang to do this? Well, as you can see, that, that question kind of came a little early, but you can see that I also did the weak side as well. But yes, you go through the heavy side with that technique, and I think it, it works out really well. And then you can do different, you know, different techniques on the sides and all of that. This is just a completely separate fringe uh, technique. So um, tons of requests coming in. Love seeing all of your guys' uh, stuff. Love seeing the chat. How are you enjoying the show so far? Um, somebody asked for a root placement. It was Jennifer. So she wanted to see a hair color technique with uh, the roots painted in and then foiling coming through that. Um, so I actually have a, a video that we filmed um, last year, uh, like not even a year ago, uh, with Larissa Love from Joyco. Uh, I reached out to Joyco this morning and said, can I use some of the content that we created together uh, for Joyco On Demand education? So uh, you guys are going to get a chance to see some Joyco On Demand education. I'm going to play that um, and then we'll come back. So I've got a technique from Larissa. This is called the trifecta technique. Um, and she's going to go in, she's going to paint the roots and then she's going to go in and add some, uh, highlighting to it. So it's a really useful technique. It's going to happen real quick. It's only about a five minute video and then we'll come back live and I can answer any of your guys' questions that you have in the chat. Keep, keep, keep the requests coming in and we'll keep the show going. Uh, really excited to see you guys. Uh, so here's the technique. Here we go. Hi everyone, I'm Joyco brand ambassador Larissa Love. Welcome to Joyco's Education On Demand. Hi everyone, I'm Joyco brand ambassador Larissa Love. Welcome to Joyco's Education On Demand, your online source for salon classes and education 24 seven. Today I'm gonna to show you a seamless color correction with this trifecta technique. You'll learn to incorporate dimension, depth, and brightness using Lumbashine Dimensional Deposit Demi Permanent Cream Color. Let's get started. I always start every client by pre-treating the hair with Defy Damage Pro Series 1. It's a super easy to use spray on bond protector that's not only going to help shield hair from damage but also optimize the performance of your lightning and color products. Shake the can vigorously and angle it downwards as you spray in short bursts 3 to 6 inches away from the hair. Apply it to horizontal sections about 2 inches apart and comb it through for even distribution throughout the hair. The hair already looks so much shinier and healthier. When used as a two-step system, Defy Damage Pro Series helps ensure 80% less breakage, makes hair five times stronger, improves color deposit, and provides greater, more even lift when lightening. It also helps maintain over 90% of color vibrancy. That's why it's truly the next generation of bond building. For this technique, you'll need the following formulas. Formula 1 is Lumishine DD Demi Permanent Cream Color 6NW mixed with 5 volume Lumishine Developer. Formula 2 is Lumishine DD Demi Permanent Cream Color 10N and 10SB mixed with 5 volume Lumishine Developer. And Formula 3 is Lumishine DD Demi Permanent Cream Color 7MW and 6N mixed with 5 volume Lumishine Developer. I chose these shades because her hair is already blonde and I only need deposit to add dimension, shine, and multiple shades of blonde. I want to combine both nude tones like the natural warms with pale highlights using my favorite cool series, the silver blues. Section the hair from ear to ear at the crown, then part the front section down the middle. Start by applying formula 1 using a shadow root method to the back. Make sure to feather the formula out 2-4 to four inches from the scalp as you work your way down. How far you feather the formula down will depend on the amount of regrowth and your desired results. Move to the sides taking vertical sections and apply formula 1 with a shadow root method. A shadow root method is where you apply your regrowth formula and feather the formula out from the scalp for depth and a seamless transition. A shadow root is one of my most requested services because it's low maintenance and grows out seamlessly without any harsh lines. Feather the formula back to help create a perfect looking diffusion. The completed shadow root application will resemble an upside down teardrop as you can see here. Now move to the nape and take a large 2 inch section, weave out a horizontal parting and apply formula 2 melted into formula 3. Take another weave from the same section and apply formula 3 from the shadow root to the ends. Place foils between the weave partings to protect the hair. Take a large horizontal parting, then take out a small weave and clip it away. This will be a highlight. Take another large weave from that for a total of 3 weaves out of one parting. Do a low light, a color melt, and a highlight all from the same large section. 
three weaves total from one section. Lumishine DD Dimensional Deposit Demi Creams are a great option for clients who have porosity issues and need deposit only. It's also great for clients who want a beautiful grow out with no line of demarcation. They're also amazing for dimensional low lighting, color corrections, and great coverage and blending. With 25 shades to choose from, Lumishine Demi Permanent DD Creams will add two times the shine, re-strengthen the hair, cover great 100% in levels 1 of 5, and blend great beautifully in levels 6 to 10. Repeat this process until you reach the crown and then continue the process on the side front sections. Process for 20 minutes, shampoo and condition with K-Pack Color Therapy, then style as desired. I hope you enjoyed this class. For more hair color classes like this, be sure to check out the digital education library in the description below. Thanks for watching. All right. How'd you guys enjoy that video? So great technique by Larissa um, for Joyco On Demand Education. So if you want to see their, they have tons of education on their website. Uh, go to joyco.com and then click on the On Demand Education section. And you can see it there. If you want to rewatch that video, you can watch it there. Um, they got a ton of good stuff. And most of it we filmed at the FSC studio right behind me. So, um, so I hope you guys like that. Let me know. What are you thinking? How are you feeling? Um, Kelsey had a good question. Uh, it wasn't about that technique, but she was saying uh, how to deal with guests coming back into the salon once we reopen uh, who have done their regrowth with box dye and have now created banding. So, uh, Kelsey, what I would say, um, this is, I would deal with it the same way I would deal with it if I had a new guest come in. And, and I think we're going to have to look at our guests, a lot of them like new guests and, uh, and assess them the same way. It's going to have to be a more thorough consultation to see what they've put on their hair. But at the same time, we have such good color removers now that um, you know, being able to go back and just kind of remove some of those dyes. I don't think it's going to be as difficult as it would have been, let's say 10 years ago, uh, when I was coloring hair then, uh, compared to now. So just go in, do your consultation, really talk to them, be kind to them. Because obviously the one thing that we need to realize is that, um, no one knows and still doesn't really know in most of the country and the world when we're getting back in. So, uh, we have to be sensitive to the fact that they may have put something on their hair, um, and the better we approach that, the more open and honest they're going to be. And then we're going to have more success in our job uh, behind the chair. So just make sure um, you talk to every guest like they're a new guest. And then I don't think you're going to have any challenges uh, moving forward and just remove the color the way that you would. And it's probably going to be a little extra charge. And if we come back into the salon uh, with time constraints and we can only work for so long uh, with each guest behind the chair, then I would say that first visit is going to be removing that color. Second visit is going to be a base color. Uh, third visit could be where you start highlights, like depending on the guest. So you really just need to make sure. Uh, and also make sure that you're texting this phone number down below with what requests you want um, so that I can make sure that they get on this show or our future shows. Uh, you can also call and leave me a message. Let me know what you think of the show and leave a comment. I can see all of your comments and I'm taking requests now. I've got a lot of great ones. I'm writing them all down right here on a piece of paper. Um, so let's see for Nancy. Uh, actually Donna, I'm going to, I'm going to play Donna's request first and we're going to do a long layered. Uh, she said waist length hair. This is a pretty long hair. Here's the other uh, disclaimer I'm going to give you guys. This model is super happy. She's just not showing it on her face. So uh, sometimes I'm good at filming education and other times I'm just good at the education part and not watching the model and how they're reacting. So uh, this will be very interesting, but I'm excited to share with you guys this video. Let's All right, guys, so we're going to start it. off we our sectioning. Now, the sectioning is very simple for this cut because uh, our model has fine hair. So I go around, I go right along the parietal ridge, then I do a straight line just to cut off mid-crown, and then I go back down parietal ridge, creating a rectangle shape on the top of the head. I twist that away. We call that a Zulu knot. Uh, twist it away, and I put a clip in it, keep it nice and tight. 
that is actually the most important section that we're going to cut today. Now, what I go through and when I cut the underneath, because she has really fine hair, you can see that's all the density that she has. Sorry that the camera angle is a little dark, um, but just know that I'm cutting a direct, like a straight line in the back of her head shape. So nothing complicated here, just combing everything nice and clean. Make sure that you do multiple different passes with the comb, especially when you're combing everything down and cutting it to make sure that you have all the hair. So I cut a nice flat blunt line in the back. Now I don't want to layer any of that uh, underneath hair because of the fact that it's so fine already. So if I layer that, I'm going to take the density away and it's going to look really stringy in the end result. So now I focus on my rectangle. What I do is I take horizontal sections across the top. I make sure I stay right on that parietal ridge area. I bring it down and then I give it a twist at my desired length. So what I want to do is create kind of a little face frame um, technique or face frame uh, for her just to give her that volume, that movement. And I wanted to keep it a little bit longer to keep that density. With fine hair, I don't want to go too short right here in the face frame area. So I bring the hair down. And then the reason I do that little twist with my finger, which is going to create a really nice round softness to the layers, help it kind of follow the head shape. Um, so I continue that all the way through that top section, over directing everything to that stationary guide. Now, Paul Mitchell sent me these Magic Tide collections. You can get in Paul Mitchell salons now. So I'm going to choose a few products from that. I'm also going to add in the Thicken Up, which is a styling liquid that we're going to place in the hair to create that volume and really blow up that cuticle. Also, Danielle's doing the blow dry. And what I want you guys to really focus on is her elevation when she does her round brushing. So she's got the Paul Mitchell Neuro blow dryer. It's the Halo blow dryer. I've done a review of that if you guys are wondering. And this is the Ergo round brush. So I love the Ergo round brush for um, the quickness of it. It's got a really large barrel and a large handle. It's also got really nice grips on it. So if you have product on your hands, you don't slip. I love these round brushes. They are available on Free Salon Education. Com. So Danielle's going through, she's blow drying everything back, but she's also working to get a lot of movement and flexibility um, in the hair. So you'll see her, she kind of works the... Um, the truck and trailer method with the blow dryer. So she's got the nozzle uh, right up to the to the brush. She lifts the hair to give it that elevation and she'll do the front half of it. And then she also goes through and hits the back. But the last pass she does with the brush is always the one that she, the direction she wants the hair to go. So the last pass is always gonna be uh, kind of round brushed back. The one thing I really want you guys to get out of this video is the fact that I did kind of, uh, I brought everything forward to cut it, to create the layering. I wanted to create a face framed effect. Bring everything forward and cutting it makes it shorter in the front, longer towards the back. So it pushes those layers a little bit longer, a little higher density in the back for the fine hair. And then when Danielle goes through and she round brushes, she's mimicking my haircut. So she's basically taking everything and blow drying it off of the face because that's how we wanted the haircut to be. So you can see, you can see all the layers, the movement, um, the body that we're putting into it, but this isn't how it should end, guys. If you just wanted to do a round brush, you can do it, um, but we wanted to go through and do a curling iron because of the fact that when you have fine hair and you want body, then you need to go through and add a little bit of wave to it just to build it up even more. So you can see that that haircut definitely helped. It was definitely an assistant to the fact that she has fine hair, but it's not the it's not the complete answer in a haircut. It's all about how you style the hair. So Danielle goes through, same thing. She works the iron. This is a one inch uh, curling iron and she's working it back off the face as well. She goes through, she curls it, now it's pretty tight curls. And if you uh, are a product of, let's say the 80s or anything like that, tight curls might freak you out. The cool thing about this style, when I was watching Danielle, at the very end, she goes through with this brush, she goes, uses a paddle brush, and she brushes through the hair, and it really just brings the style to life. You can see the haircut come to life. And also, we did color uh, her hair as well. So Brian did a color on her. That's going to be a separate video coming out soon. So you guys will get to see uh, that transformation as well. But you can see what the waves do, how much volume we get with this style. I hope you guys liked the video. Definitely let me know if you have questions in the comments below. Hope Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. All right. So there is a layered haircut for you guys. Uh, love the framing twist technique. Excellent cutting technique. Awesome. Gene, I'm glad you, uh, glad you liked it. Uh, 
Cutting with a razor. That's a good call, uh, Francis. I like that. So um, coming up, I've got a couple different techniques. We're going to do a curly hair balayage, which Danielle, uh, Danielle from our salon, we filmed her doing that. And also Nancy wanted to see a short shag. So um, I think what I'll do is we'll go into... First, I want to just kind of promote that this show isn't really sponsored by anybody at this moment, but um, what I wanted to share with you guys is it is kind of sponsored by our new app. And if you're not a member of our new app, it's free. It doesn't cost anything. It's got all this education on it. And also there's a community section where you can share your work and we're growing it every single day into a bigger and bigger, cooler uh, community on there. So if you're not part of the FSE community, make sure you download FSE now, which is the app that I'm about to show you guys a video about. So um, what I want you to do is I want you to watch this video and then we're going to get into more videos right after it's over. So here it is. So that's the new app. So I hope you guys like that. Let me, uh, let me get myself back over here. Uh, so I hope you guys are digging. Those of you guys that are on the app, there's thousands of hairdressers signing up uh, all the time. So I'm really excited to have you guys a part of the community, uh, sharing your work and all of that. There's some really awesome updates coming in the next like five days. So uh, it's going to get even more interactive um, and even cooler tool to use. Somebody asked if it's available in India. It's available everywhere in the world. So um, and what it does is you create a profile on the app. You can share your work within our community. Uh, you can also watch education videos. Um, you can see review. So then what you're, what happens is your profile then goes on a website called stylistlocator.com that we created. And those profiles are searchable by clients. So uh, the clients that watch our free salon education stuff, which is millions of people every uh, month, they get to go on that website and then search for stylists in their area like you and get to see your profile, your work that you've shared on there and all of that stuff. So really, really excited. Me and my wife have worked on it for a long time uh, and it's finally a reality and it's going to get better all the time because now we're adding new features and not just building the base of it. We're actually creating new things all the time. So let's keep this live show going. Really excited to have you guys in the chat. Keep posting what you want to see and we'll keep it going. Uh, we'll keep the show going. Um, next video is going to be a razor cut. So a lot of you guys have been uh, requesting. And then also, uh, and then I got Nancy's short shag coming up as well um, soon. So this is going to be a lob, a long bob haircut with a razor. Hope you guys like it. Here we go. All right, guys. So we're going to start off by changing the blade of our carving comb. If you guys aren't familiar with what a carving comb is, it, it, it's one of my favorite tools. We're going to be using the entire haircut today. Uh, the one side has a full cutting side, and the other side cuts 50% of the hair. So it's great for texturizing. We're also using the Donald Scott Prepare, which is a liquid tool glide. The great thing about this product is that it adds condition to the hair, and it adds a nice slip to the hair. So when you're razor cutting, it keeps the hair nice and healthy. All right, so let's go over the sectioning. We started off by a using a left hand side parting that's where she's going to part her hair then we created a horseshoe section based off of that parting down to behind the ear and now i'm going to take a vertical section down center back clip away the right side and start working on the left side uh, the best part about using a carving comb is that i'm going to go through here with a heavy stroke of the carving comb using the 100 percent carved side um, what that's going to do is create um, layers within the haircut without actually having to elevate. So it's really a freedom tool for me. Um, I, you guys know that I do like to do precision cutting, but sometimes there's haircuts that warrant a little more freedom, and I love this tool for that. I'm going through with the 50% carved side now just to soften the ends of the haircut. We can go in. I'm going to show you guys some techniques later in dry cutting with the carving comb that uh, will also soften the ends as well. 
Now, we're overdirecting the hair back, just taking vertical sections. This is the greatest part about the carving comb as well, is that uh, these haircuts happen so fast. So um, it's a great tool for creating this type of look um, quickly. So uh, just vertical sections, working them back, using our previously cut back section as our guide, using a little bit of elevation at this point, um, just so that we don't have the hair too heavy as it falls forward. So razor cutting is just like cutting with scissors uh, when it comes to elevation because the more you elevate the hair, the more weight you're going to remove. So because I'm over directing the hair all the way back, that means I'm going to push a lot of weight forward. So if I give it a little bit of elevation, it's going to give me uh, a little bit lighter result as the hair falls forward. So that is pretty much the wet cut, guys. That's how quick it happens with a carving comb. Uh, that's why it's a great tool for the salon. Now we're going to throw in Bricado Active. It's a serum. Um, really going to make the hair soft and shiny. You can see the shine, how quick it happens uh, in the blow dry. A little bit of a flat wrap. What I want to show you guys is we're going to do some texturizing techniques with a razor. Yes, on dry hair. And I know that freaks some of you out. But here's the deal. You can cut dry with a razor because we put a fresh blade in um, that's why we can do it if if i didn't have a fresh blade and i had a you know i've done multiple haircuts with a blade you can't cut dry but because this blade is so sharp it's it's sharper than my scissor blade so we're actually going to go through this is what we call point cutting with a carving comb the cool thing about this is you just you're working both sides of the tool um, it's skinny and out the ends and it gives it a nice soft feel just by working that razor back and forth uh, on top of your fingers. This is great for men's cutting. You can use this technique um, on pretty much any type of haircut uh, just to soften ends and add a lot of texture. So we're going through the back, pretty much holding the hair where we had it. Um, again, a razor is a, a freedom tool, so we're going to go through and, and really cut the hair where we feel like it needs to be cut. So I'm going through just pinching the ends, a little bit of pinch cutting. You can see how soft that falls. Um, it's such a nice shape, and it happens, and it's created so quickly. That's the amazing part about a razor. So now I'm just going to take a triangle out of the front, and I'm going to do a slide cut with the razor to create a nice soft fringe in the front of the haircut. Using the razor kind of like a pencil, it's, it's really... It's an artist's tool, I believe, um, you know, just going through, softening where we need to soften, cutting where we need to cut, and going through. But you can see how cool that shape is. But how soft it is around the edges um, is what makes this cut stand out. So now we're going to go through with a curling iron. I'm just going to take vertical sections all the way around the head, leaving the ends out um, because I want to keep the ends straighter looking. And I'm just adding a little bump to the base of the hair. This is a really modern style. It definitely gives your clients a more versatile feel. So um, I'm going through. You might have seen me twist the curling iron one way, then go back the other way. I'm creating texture in this style. I'm not really trying to keep it too uniform. So I'm not worried about that. If I clip away the fringe, because in the bang area, I'm going to actually go a little bit more... Um, more elevation on that. I don't want it to fall flat. So I section that away. I go through, curl everything else. Um, then I'll go through and do the, the bangs at the end. All right, guys. So as I finish up these, this haircut and the style, um, I just want to let you guys know that the carving comb is available on freesaloneducation.com. It's such a cool tool, and it's honestly, I think, like $35. So uh, definitely go on, check that out. You can also get it with the prepare spray as well, um, so you can try that out. I hope you guys like this style. If you do, please do me a favor, share it with your friends. Um, that's all these videos cost is a share. So just send it out there, share it with your friends, uh, hit the like button, make sure you subscribe to our channel. There'll be a lot more videos to come. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you on the next video. You can't hear me. There we go. <laughs> All right. Uh, awesome. I love seeing everybody's comments. Um, so we're back on here live now. Listen, this show, if you're just tuning in for the first time, what this is all about is you place a request 
Uh, I've created thousands of hair videos over the last six years. I find a video that matches your request and I play it for you uh, so that we can all learn together and grow together. We're all sitting at home together. So uh, it's definitely the best way to do it. Um, all right. So to answer some of your guys' questions, um, Gene saying, where can I get that comb? Uh, the razor comb is available on freesaloneducation.com. So if you go there, click the shop, you can find it. It's called the Donald Scott carving comb. Uh, it's got the hundred percent cutting side, 50% carving side. It's around 39 bucks. So you can get it on there. Um, let's see. Hi from Canada. Hello, Canada. Um, using a razor. I did use the razor on dry hair. No one commented on that, which I'm excited about, but I also want to bring it up just in case you're thinking it. Um, as long as you have a fresh blade, um, the razor blades are super sharp and the Donald Scott carving comb blade is really thick. So you'll notice that, uh, even when you buy them, you buy them in a pack of 10, they're a little pricier than a normal, like pack of a thousand blades. Um, but the thing with that is, that it's such a strong blade. So when you go to cut dry hair, it cuts right through it uh, and keeps the hair healthier, um, just like doing a, a scissor slide cut. Um, let's see, is this good for thick, coarse, natural curl? Totally. Um, the biggest thing that I would probably change is my lengths that I would cut it at. Um, and I would be very careful on my, um, my tension that I pulled on that haircut because if they have curlier hair, um, you know, it's going to snap back. So just being aware of that, but the technique overall, um, I would definitely do it. Uh, and maybe even a little bit longer on the fringe for sure. Let's see. Hello, San Diego. Wish I was there for sure. It's actually getting pretty sunny outside though. Liking it. Um, and that's it. What's your favorite styling brush? I love a paddle brush. Does anybody else love a paddle brush? Uh, I would love to know this because I remember... Uh, when I became an educator, um, everybody used that Denman brush and that, uh, those smaller brushes. And I just never really loved them. Um, and I always used the paddle brush and a couple of people thought it was funny and I never thought it was funny cause I just loved the way that it polished the hair. Um, so let me know, do you love paddle brushes? I'd like to know that. Um, and I use the Ergo, uh, diamond head paddle brush, which is my favorite tool. And I don't have one here. Maybe I'll grab it, uh, in between the video, but the diamond head paddle brush is awesome because it's small. Uh, it's like a mini paddle brush, but it still has the same tension, same feel. So now when I'm working shorter cuts, I like to use that diamond head paddle brush. You can see it again, freesaloneducation.com. Uh, love the razors. Thank you. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Um, I think that's so color melt. So you know what? Let's get into a color video and then I'm going to play Nancy's uh, short shag after that. Um, but let's do a color video. And this one is... Who is requesting this? Da, da, da. Oh yeah, Emma. So Emma, uh, I'm gonna show you guys like uh, this toning video uh, that my pal Ricardo did from Joico. So uh, this is a pretty cool one. Now know guys that this doesn't have to be uh, Joico. I mean, this is a Joico video. Um, they're using Joico products, but just think of the basics of the products. Um, and you know, if you're not happy with your color line, then obviously go check out some Joico stuff. But if you are happy, think about maybe this, there is a way that you could incorporate it into your kind of everyday feel. So, um, this is a video from Joico education on demand. Um, and this is my pal, Ricardo Santiago, Santiago, I believe is his name. Let's find his Instagram name. Just so you guys. Ricardo. Stylist Ricardo Santiago on Instagram. Check him out. He's got a, a lot of cool stuff. Um, and you know, he's a friend. So go, go, go check out his stuff. Now here's a video from him. Uh, right now. Here we go. Hi everyone. I'm Joico International guest artist Ricardo Santiago. Welcome to Joico's Education on Demand, your online source for salon classes and education 24-7. Today's class is all about toning the hair. Today I'm going to share with you all the important steps to toning perfection with LumaShine Demi Permanent Liquid Color and Blonde Life Quick Tone Liquid Cream Toners. Let's get started. First, pre-treat the hair with the next generation in bond building, Defy Damage Pro Series 1 Bond Protecting Color Optimizer. Vigorously shake the can and angle it downwards as you spray the hair in short bursts three to six inches away from the hair. Defy Damage is an easy to use spray 
on Bond Protector that will provide 80% less breakage, make the hair five times stronger, and maintain over 90% color vibrancy. That makes all my color clients happy to know their color is going to last longer and their hair will be stronger. Apply it to horizontal sections about two inches apart. This will help to protect the hair from damage during the chemical services. I like to comb through for even distribution throughout the hair. You can already see shiny, healthier looking hair. Next, section the hair into quadrants. For this technique, I'm going to use the following formulas. Formula one is Lumishine Dimensional Deposit Demi Permanent Cream Color 6NWB and 8N mixed with five volume Lumishine Developer. Formula 2 is Lumishine Demi Permanent 6NWB, 7NWB, and 10NWB mixed with 5 volume Lumishine Developer. Start at the nape, take diagonal partings, and apply Formula 1. Follow the hairline, take diagonal partings to help diffuse the shadow root. Here is a tip maintain the angle of your partings until you reach the occipital bone area. Then, start to pivot and over-direct your application as you work up the head. This will provide a seamless blend and transition for your root smudge instead of making it look like regrowth. Over-direct the next section as you paint the formula on. Next, apply Formula 2 from mids to ends, melting into the shadow root. Using the right tools for the right service is very important. Because my client is already blonde, I add dimension by going darker. I chose Lumishine Demi Permanent Dimensional Deposit Creams because these deposit only creams allow me to tone, gloss, glaze, low light, root smudge, color melt, cover graze, and blend. There is a difference in service applications when choosing which product to go to. When I want to gloss and tone or refresh the mids and ends of my client's hair, I use Lumishine Demi Permanent Liquids. When I want more opacity and long lasting dimensional low lighting services, I use Lumishine Demi Permanent DD Creams. The difference is in the opacity. The liquids are translucent and sheer, while the creams are more opaque. Because I have these, I know I have the right products for any client coming into the salon. Starting in the front, take strong diagonal back sections to apply the formula, creating a seamless blend. Process for 20 minutes. Shampoo with Defy Damage Protective Shampoo and treat with Defy Damage Pro Series 2. Rinse and apply Defy Damage Protective Shield throughout the mids and ends. Finish the look with a little Joyco Beach Shake Dry Texturizing Finisher for soft, shiny waves that look beach made, only better. I hope you enjoyed this class. For more classes like the one you just watched, be sure to check out our digital education library linked in the description below. Thank you for watching. All right, so that's Ricardo uh, showing you his toning technique. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, what do you guys think? You like the show? I, for some reason, I don't know what it is, but this show brings like happiness to me. And I think it's like, because all this stuff has been created over so many years. And like, it's so fun to look back at it all. Like all of these videos we did by hand and created them. And now like we have this huge library of videos that can share with you guys. And it's just the best. So I uh, hope you guys are liking it. Oh, my cardiologist is calling. Awesome. Um, so da -da 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 -da, Gene, thank you so much. Roya, Kelsey, Anna. I see all of you guys, Lynn, Donna. Uh, thank you guys for being in the chat, being on here live. There's hundreds of you guys on here. Uh, on different platforms, so uh, super awesome. Uh, let's keep this thing going. Um, I did promise Nancy that I would show off a short shag haircut. So I wanna get that loaded up here. And let's see. All right, cool, got it loaded up. So Nancy, here we go. Welcome to the video. So this video, if you've been waiting for a shag haircut, a uh, nice medium length shag haircut, this is the video for you. Super popular uh, as we're looking at October 2018, moving into the fall. Um, this is definitely a nice trend to move your guests into. So if you've got a medium length client out there, or if you're watching this and you're not a hairdresser, you're looking for haircut inspiration, this is definitely a video to share to your hairdresser uh, to show them something new for you uh, moving into the fall. Some nice layering uh, creates a lot of movement, a lot of texture. It's a really fun haircut. 
So to start the haircut off, I go right down center back and then I part the hair over to right behind the ear. So I create a nice horizontal line and that's where I start taking it. So for basically from the occipital bone down is what I'm working on and I'm working on a stationary guide. So I'm bringing everything back to the center and cutting it. Um, which is creating kind of a concave feel. So those of you guys that don't really know concave layering, um, it's a it's a collapsed layer. So um, bringing everything over, and because the head shape curves from the occipital bone in at the nape, what's happening is it's giving it more extreme layering. So it looks like I'm just pulling it straight out from the head, but in reality, the head shape is curving in, so I create more of a scooped effect. So I'm combing the hair over, over directing it to the center back and cutting it there. All right, so now as I move on to the opposite side, stay um, keeping my same body position, um, and but still pushing. Now, so now I'm pushing the hair into the middle. So I take my parting, and you can see I'm standing over, and I push the hair away from me instead of combing that center hair in because what that does is it takes the guide and pulls it to the new hair instead of pushing the new hair to the guide. Anytime you move the guide from where it lives, um, you're going to end up with an inconsistent guideline, which really um, is going to throw off the entire haircut. So just make sure uh, you're consistent with everything that you do. So when I cut on the right hand side, I was pulling that hair into the center. So when I cut on the left hand side, I'm still pulling the hair to the center. Now look at the, the buildup of weight that you see uh, at the top part and then how it collapses in and really skinnies up the perimeter area. That's what's cool about this shag haircut because we're going to build up a uh, you know, a lot of movement, a lot of structure in the very top part of the head, really working with the curve of the head, but then also collapsing it at the bottom. So now as I start to work up the head shape, now I'm going to really uh, focus on following the head shape. So instead of using the head shape to kind of build out any concave layering, now we're creating convex layers that follow the head shape all the way up to the crown. So combing everything down, bringing everything up and out. So this is now, um, instead of over directing to the center, now I'm bringing everything straight out from the head as well because I want to create more of a balanced effect. So when you over direct something all the way to the center and you keep doing that, um, you get extreme over direction, which then puts a lot of length um, and pushes a lot of weight to the side. So we want to have consistent layering throughout so it has kind of a balanced textured effect throughout. Now also notice right there, I didn't cut all the way to the end. Like a lot of times we feel as hair cutters that we need to go through and cut every bit of hair. I like disconnection. Disconnection is something that if used correctly can really add a lot of um, density to the haircut. So instead of going through and cutting all the way down the side, I stop and don't cut and I'll work on that in the dry cut, but I keep that density behind the ear because that's where a lot of times we end up with a hole because we go down and cut. And as the hairline grow, grows, or not grows up, but as the hairline kind of curves up around to the edge of the temple, um, you have less hair that you're working with. So see how I comb it out in a way, and then I still comb everything back and cut my consistent kind of following the head shape uh, round line uh, around there. So you can see all that layering, but you still have the density. I'm gonna do the same thing on the sides, right? So I go from the parietal ridge uh, which is that kind of division point between the top and the bottom. And I section that away because I want to keep that density on the sides, but I go through and I keep continuing those, those layers, following the head shape. So keeping the convex layers throughout the top. So notice my over direction on the top of the head is right to the center. So she's, she's going to wear this very similar to a center parting. If your guest was going to wear it to a side parting, I would go over top of that parting if that makes sense. So just make sure your over direction matches the way that they're going to wear the hair. So bringing everything to the center, what that's doing is pushing length to the sides, right? So if I were to go and follow the head shape and have a traveling guide, I'd end up with really short layers on the side of the head. I want to push a little extra length there so that the layers match up more with the head shape. All right, now clip away from the parietal ridge down. What that does is just ensures that I don't cut into that hair. So that helps me out. So again, on top of my fingers, following the head shape. So I comb, I cut, I recomb, and I cut. And I just follow the head shape, making sure that that curve matches up. So I didn't really mention, but if you guys are wondering, I did get my initial guideline from the back crown area. So from what we previously cut in the section. 
And then once I get my line established, then I just use that line as my guide, as a stationary guide. And again, using the pushing pulling uh, technique that we used in the back as well. So now I'm pushing the hair away from my body into the guideline and holding it over top the center of the head. So now I let out those clips and you can see that disconnection, how it gets a little bit longer, but the shaggy layers that happen on top. So now I'm using Paul Mitchell Invisible Wear Volume Whip. It's a really light foam. So I'm going to use that because I want to have a light kind of, uh, it's called Invisible Wear because it's got more of an invisible hold. So you get the structure from it, but at the same time, it's super light. Uh, using the Paul Mitchell Blow Dryer also to go back and forth, just working in that style. And then... Also, I'm using a paddle brush. I prefer uh, a paddle brush. This is the Ergo paddle brush that we have on our website. I prefer using that because it has a nice tension to it. I also like the Diamond Head brush, which is a smaller paddle brush. So you can check that out as well. But I like the tension. Then I go through with the Paul Mitchell Pro Tools uh, smoothing iron and work my way through there. So you can see our line, the round kind of feel to it. Um, now I'm going to go through and just do a little point cutting on the top of the head to soften uh, any line that we created. So harsh lines are fine, but going in and just kind of breaking them up a little bit and softening them gives it more of a textured appearance, um, which I really like, especially with a shag haircut like this. A little bit of slide cutting. It's a half open, half close. Also, remember, I'm using the Matt Beck scissor. We still have some available. So if you're looking for a brand new scissor, Mizutani manufactured this thing for me. I love it. It's to my specification. I created the whole design. So if you're looking for a scissor, click the link below. Finishing off with the uh, Invisible Wear Paul Mitchell um, Undone Texture Spray. So obviously that fits perfectly for this haircut. Watch all the layers come to life as I start to uh, just spray the hairspray on there. Um, so much texture, so much movement. Really love this uh, cut. It's got a really fun color technique as well that I'm going to share with you guys later on. Uh, but I hope you guys like this video. Hit me up on social media, everything at Free Salon Education. If you have any questions about this video, we're always there to uh, answer those. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you on the next one. All right. Very cool. So that's a shag haircut. Now, uh, one thing that we did talk about uh, on the last break was that uh, my favorite brushes. So I went, while that video was playing, went into my storage and grabbed my favorite brushes. So this is the Ergo Diamond Head brush that I was talking about. Put it here so it's in focus. Uh, so this, compared to a regular paddle brush, is mini size. So I love it because the bristles are the same, has the same tension, but it's just smaller in the hand and for shorter uh, haircuts like the one I just did. I really love that. And then also uh, for longer hair, I use the regular paddle brush. So I kind of switch back and forth. Not one doesn't really do much different than the other. I mean, I can get a little extra lift with this one, kind of pull the hair up and uh, leaf it a little bit better. But other than that, and then uh, obviously there's round brushes from Ergo as well. So if you're looking for some new brushes, go check out freesaloneducation.com. Click the shop, and there you go. Um, also, uh, real quick, before we get into the next video, we're going to be doing a curly hair balayage, extra curly hair balayage uh, by Danielle. So I want to show that to you guys. Um, I'm not going to butcher the name of who requested it, but that's coming up. I gotta, I'll got i do a few more videos probably. Uh, I don't want this show to go too long um, and because I'm going to do it every day for you guys. So, um, put your requests in. I'll get a couple more videos in after this one. Uh, the one thing I want to promote for sure right now is our app. If you're not part of the FSE now community, uh, go check it out. Um, just go to freesaloneducation.com. You can see the link, uh, to download the app and obviously just write it down because I don't want you to leave yet. I don't want you going anywhere, but you'll download the app, uh, create a profile, become part of our community. I want to share with you guys what that app is all about. Uh, so I'm going to do that real quick and then I'm going to jump back on and introduce the video. So check out our new app in the app store.
So that's the new app, guys. Go check it out on the App Store. Uh, after the show's over, don't waste any time. Go download it. Create your profile. It's free. It's free. 100% free. So no excuses. Um, Lynn, are you serious, Lynn? Lynn's saying she can't get into the app still. Me and Lynn have been going back and forth for a couple weeks. Lynn, we're going to figure this out. As soon as I'm done here, uh, I will go on there and, and see how I can figure it out for you. Uh, Jess says, download it. Can't wait to check it out. Jess, you're my favorite person on the chat right now. I'd love to see some cutting techniques done on curly hair. I've got that coming up. I'm going to do a curly hair shag. That's going to be one of the last videos I play today. So I'll do that for you. Um, Melina, 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 I think. Um, all right, cool. Nikki, so anybody that can't get into the app, if you're having any trouble, there, I've seen two people. Um, usually it's some kind of email mistake or it's in your spam folder. What I want you to do is email me, Matt, at Free Salon Education. Put the title uh, or the subject as I can't get into the app. And, uh, and I'll make sure that I figure it out for you so that you don't have to worry about that. It's Claudia, Claudia, Claudia. Um, it's iPhone and Android. So it's everywhere. Uh, so no excuses and it's free. So go check it out. Sign up. Um, coming up right now, a request for curly hair balayage. So I want to play that for you guys. This is a technique done by, uh, a girl that works at our salon, Danielle, super talented stylist. Can't wait to have everybody back here working, doing hair again. Um, but she did this technique. It's a really cool sponge highlight on curly hair. And it's a balayage uh, feel to it. Um, so I think you guys are really going to dig this uh, technique. And that's it. So I'm going to play it now. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I will figure it out for you. Um, and then also make sure that you're texting this number right here. I'm seeing those texts come through or call the phone number, leave a message. Let me know what you think of the show and comment. What videos do you want to see next? Uh, we're taking requests uh, and I want to share the education that you want to learn. That's what this show is all about. So enjoy this video. Here's Danielle. Thanks for watching. Here we go. Hey everybody. So today I chose to use Vero Blue from Joyco. I'm doing a one to one and a half ratio with their 30 volume developer. So mixing it to a really nice creamy consistency so that way it can work a little smoother. Now I'm just separating it into four basic quadrants just to keep everything a little easier to work with. Now I'm just zigzagging in a diagonal back section and cutting that section in half. Sections are pretty large just because with your curl pattern, it's a little blown out. The sponge is a sea sponge that soaks up a lot of products. You can see the little pitted edges. I start in the mid shaft and then work my way up. And then once I place my foil, I saturate. So that way the underside and the mids get a little bit more saturation and lightness going through it. So pretty much like a basic balayage. And again, just splitting that in half with another zigzag. That way the hair has somewhere to lay and evenly disperses the highlight with the natural color. I also use the corner of my sponge just to feather it a little bit closer to the hairline without giving it a hard, harsh line. Danielle, would you say that the, there's a big difference between um, when you're coloring fine hair and coloring curly hair, taking more hair at a time when it's curly? I would say yes, just because then you have a little bit more cushion. You don't have to go all the way through to the bottom of the hair, and then that's where you get a little bit more of that spotting. Okay, so again, just placing my foils. I chose to use the foils just so that I can incubate the hair a little bit more and get it up to that orange yellow face. I also chose the blue lightener because you can see the color lightening a little bit better than if you had a, a white powder lightener. Okay, so again, using that corner just to shimmy that right up to the scalp. And I'm more of a repetitive motion kind of stylist, so that's why I like this technique. Because it's not like you have to change it from section to section. So it's really fast, really easy.
Now, once you get to the top, you have the choice of whether you want to weave it just to make yourself a little bit more comfortable, or you can go in and do the same thing as I was, where you're just saturating that top piece and the mid shafts and ends. Totally up to you. So we're gonna process for about 25 minutes. And as you can see here, this is the view of both straight and curly. So in Danielle Tone, guys, she used a level eight ash and then a dash of one in just to add a little bit of depth to it uh, on dry hair. I'm using the Joyco Beach Shake, great texturizing product, gives a huge amount of shine to the hair and is really touchably soft. So thanks everybody and I hope you like the video. All right, so what'd you guys think of that? Um, one one cool thing that I, I had forgotten about that video, and it's something that I know that Danielle does, I know that Brian, uh, Brian and Arslan does as well. I would like to know, do you guys do this? Um, she added that dash of one end, uh, which gives it kind of that a little extra pump of smokiness to the tone. Do you guys ever try that? Uh, let me know in the chat. Love to see that. Uh, um, loving. Hey guys, just wanted to check in briefly while I could. Loving this concept uh, from Guideline. Oh, check it out. What's up? Uh, I actually need to text you back. So, uh, Jordan Cox, check out Jordan's uh YouTube channel, Guideline. He's starting it, starting it up. He's getting it going. Uh, love seeing that. Love seeing other people in the industry, uh, creating things. Uh, this industry is huge. And we should all be supporting each other and creating our own stuff. And not everybody likes the same stuff. So uh, there's an audience out there for everybody. And I think sometimes we get a little caught up in um, thinking that we we should, you know, we should have the audience, but that's not the truth. Everybody should have it. Um, so go check out Jordan. It's Guideline. He's on the chat right now. <laughs> um, hope you guys are enjoying the show. Requests are still going. Um, I'm going to be on here for just a little bit longer. I don't want to take it on too long uh, and have this show go, you know, just too far. I want to keep your guys' attention on there. Uh, still tons of people online, though, so I really appreciate that. And uh, it's less as I talk, so I want to keep keep the videos going. Uh, let me see what, what video we have next. Um, I got through everybody's stuff there. So the last one I want to kick off, this one is from my pal, Sam Villa. And here's the thing I want, the reason why I definitely want to have this one. And, and, and no matter what, even if you guys request it. So some people did say some seamless layer stuff in the chat. Uh, this is all about creating seamless layers in a one length bob. Um, some of you guys might not have even thought to ask that question, but one person did talk about seamless layers. So uh, Sam's got a ton of advice in this. Uh, we had him in, in the studio. We, we filmed some stuff for his YouTube channel. And this is such a cool video uh, just to show you guys how to create that seamless layered effect. So um, tons of great advice from Sam Via coming up. Uh, can't wait to share this video with you guys. Let's get started with it. Here it is. Hi, my Sam friend, Vier. Sam Via here, Redken Global Artistic Ambassador. I have such a cool technique that I want to share with you. Take a look at this one link, Bob. Okay. It looks pretty much one length, doesn't it? But yet, watch when I take my hands through it, watch the movement that I get out of it and the layers that you see in that. There's a video that we did some time back where you all fell in love with it. It's about how do you create seamless layers, invisible layers, on maybe a bob or somebody that has long hair and give them some volume and some movement on the top. So now let's show you another way that you can create that in the top and crown. Let's get started. The section is the most critical part in this. So what we're gonna do is separate our side area from the back area. So we're gonna come through. Now in most cases, I would always separate the side area just over the ear or just behind the ear. Now what we discovered at Sam Via, the, the transition of that from the horizontal transition to where the comb comes off the, line, off the head is much further back. So we are moving our side area further back and the reason being 
We've discovered by doing this, it really helps us from when we layer hair or cutting bobs from getting holes behind the ear. So now look at how far back that section goes. That's to the right corner back. We're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. So notice that we'll set this movement up first in terms of where it's at. Now look how I can take a box directly on top and I can see and visualize where that corner is. Now come through and blouse. And it's gonna happen right at that area. Okay, so once I'm there, let's separate this now. Now this is gonna help me to determine where that diamond is gonna to go to and I'll show you that in a moment, now watch. Once we're here, and I'm just checking my top view to make sure that I'm even on both sides. Remember, distribution of weight is critical from left to right, right to left. So I'm just moving that just slightly forward on my left side. Checking and I'm correct. All right, now here we go, watch this now. So here's what I, I wanna do, I wanna layer this out, She's saying she wants a little bit of volume in her bob. She's tired of it being one length, but loves the idea of keeping it one length. So we wanna just give her a little bit more movement and a little bit more volume in that top area. So now I'm gonna come through, I'm gonna take a diagonal section. So now where do I take this diagonal section to or how high? Take the comb and just rock that comb. When it comes off, that's the point where I'm gonna to go to. Now watch in the front. What I'm gonna go do in the front area is I'm gonna look and see where's the comb come off when it comes off the hairline. At this point there, now I'm gonna connect these two dots. So now that's my diagonal back. So now you can see how I still have the weight of the bob sitting there. So let's just isolate this for a moment. We're gonna come back to that. Let's go back to the opposite side. We're gonna repeat the same procedure in terms of what we're doing. So once again, just rocking the comb. Where it comes off, I'm just gonna mark that spot. Now I have already have a point of reference here. Once we have that point of reference in the front and a point of reference in the back, now it's just a matter of connecting those two dots. Now once I've got that on both sides, now I need to come back and get the triangle in the back. So here's what I'm trying to share with you. I'm letting the head form, the shape of the head, tell me where to sit the height of this diamond section that I'm gonna cut. So I'm not just going there and just drawing a diamond section saying, okay, this is where I'm gonna place it. Let the head tell you where it wants to go. So now we're gonna determine where does this diamond drop back to the back. So I place my comb right where on top of that crown where it comes off. Now I'm gonna go diagonal back to the center back. And now from here, I continue and connect the dot to the opposite side. Now what we've done is once we release all of this, we've been able to create a diamond section. That is the shape of triangle in the front and a triangle in the back. So if you take a look at a view from the top view, you'll see that I've got corners here. And let me just sharpen the corner out for you. Okay. And now we go back to the opposite side. I've got a corner here. Okay. And I'm just going back through, just sharpening these corners back out. Okay. And then from that center back to this opposite corner. Okay, now, here's what I need to do. Now I need to up isolate the underneath. But before I isolate the underneath, because we're going to cut just this area, what we're gonna suggest you do is zigzag this section. So you're gonna get a diffused edge, so it's not gonna be so cappy. So now watch, I'm gonna teach you to get the zigzag section, and I wanna do it just in these two front lines here. So we can see that this is the line. Now watch the comb. I'm gonna comb this back. I saw where my line is. Take the wide teeth of the comb, go up and down, 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 up and down. Now just slice, and now I have a zigzag section. We're gonna go back to the opposite side. So we come through, opposite side. So you can see I'm not drawing my zigzag section in. I see that diagonal line to that point. I'm gonna take some of that hair with me. Now watch, I just go up and down, up and down over that visual line that I saw. Continue back to that corner. And now just slice your finger where you think that line is, release, and you've got a zigzag section. Now once I have that zigzag section, now we can isolate the underneath. Sectioning is critical, I find, when I go in and detach these haircuts, because this underneath and the top, they will be detached from each other, disconnected. Notice how I've changed the language, disconnection to detached. I discovered with clients, you can really find that this connection can be very raw and very scary to a client. When I say, let's detach an area, let's detach your crown area so we maximize your volume, maximize the movement on top. 
Now, once I'm here, now it's time for us to come through and cut this, all right? My suggestion would be take from a middle section, work with a middle part. Now start to think about where do you, what kind of angle do you wanna create here? So let's take a look at the profile view. Notice a white comb on dark hair, I can see the extension of the line, and it really allows me to have some contrast there. So now you need to establish, do I wanna create that angle, get it shorter towards the crown, leave it longer in the back? You need to think about this. What do you want that to do? Do I want it shorter in the front, longer towards the back? Really think about that. I'm gonna go shorter in the front, longer towards the back. Why? Because when she puts her hand through this, I want this hair to have some movement to it. So think about that in terms of what it wanna do. Watch. If I go this direction, I'm actually throwing short to long. That hair is gonna move naturally, have a natural tendency, common tendency to kick forward. I want this to move back and away. So watch, I'm gonna use that back crown area here as a guide. I'm gonna come through and notch into that. Okay, now once I've notched into that, I'm gonna come back through and I'm going to soften that. And I wanna go just slightly shorter. Why, Sam? Because I remember, I want that angle short to long. So when she swings her hands through it, it's got some movement to it. So you can see I took that front a little shorter, left my length towards the back. Now let's fan. I'm working with a seven inch. Look how deep I'm going into that. I'm going very deep. So let's say that you don't have a seven inch and you have a five, five and a half. So when you want to put your hand deep and that shear won't reach all the way into it because it's so short, bring the guiding blade over your index finger, now slide down and now close. So you would be working with a short shear this way. So you're much able to go in deeper. I like having an arsenal of tools because I understand that each tool has a specific reason and purpose in terms of how it responds when you use it. Now look how I'm working short to long. Now I'm gonna come back to the opposite side and we're gonna do the same thing. So you can see why I've isolated the underneath. That allows me to pick that right back up. Let's give you a profile view. Now I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna take a slice of what I just cut as a guide. That becomes my slice. So Sam, you're elevating everything to the center. Yes, I am, to the center. Notice how I fold that. And I'm dry cutting this because I wanna see how that hair falls immediately. Remember, dry cutting is a visual exercise for us, the hairdresser. It's not for the client's sake. So that I can see what's my cutting edge as I'm working. So I look for my guide, okay? And once I see my guide, I notch to that. Don't cut a blunt line. It's gonna be much more difficult and time consuming to soften out that bluntness. Now we come through and we're gonna put deep point cut. Notice how the, it fans, look at my index finger and thumb. We fan so we spread that section out so we're able to really see how much weight we need to take out. Rather than me keeping my hand like this, I visually see there's a lot, you're gonna get overly aggressive and take out way too much weight. Now once I've done this, now watch when I release that, now watch how I'm still gonna have the illusion of a one length bob, yet at the same time, when we go through and the wind hits it, or she puts her hands through it, I think this is awesome for fine hair. It doesn't have to be over a bob. You could simply have somebody that has really one length long hair and do this, and what you're doing is you're satisfying them because you're leaving their length alone, but now you've given them some kind of movement so when they put their hand through that, they've got something happening with their bob. And not only that, but now she can get a little bit more length, excuse me, a little bit more volume in that back area. And once again, just going through and understanding how to detach a haircut seamlessly, meaning no lines that you can see through the haircut. So let's recap this. What did we do? We went through and we took a diamond section on the top. Separate your side area from your back area so you can determine how low that diamond section is gonna go. Once you have that diamond section, we're gonna encourage you to come through and take a zigzag part. Notice how I took the zigzag part. I didn't have to draw it in with my comb. I simply combed back. I visualized where that line was. Up and down, up and down, up and down. The comb never left the head. Slice where you want the zigzag and voila, you have a zigzag section. Once we've completed that section on both sides, what's important is what's the angle you're going to cut. So you need to determine, do I want that hair to move back or do I want that hair to move forward or do I want that hair to fall square? So you decide how you want it to fall. That's the way that you're going to cut it. So once again, it's all about making hairdressers better hairdressers and at Sam Villa, we believe that happens through the process of education.
Thanks for watching. All right, guys. So, Sam Villa, ladies and gentlemen. I love watching any any video. Every time I watch those videos, I get something different out of it. Um, I don't think I paid attention last time, like when I was seeing it before, uh, with the zigzag of the comb instead of just taking a zigzag with the front tooth of the comb, actually just working it through. I thought that was really cool. Um, what do you guys... Uh, so, I'm going to end the show today. Um we took a ton of requests. I feel really good about today. I feel like we got through a lot of videos. We went through uh, roots with foiling, um, waist length haircuts, short shags, curly haircuts. Um, actually, we didn't do the curly shag. So I'm going to do that tomorrow. So make sure you tune in tomorrow. I'm going to start the day off with a curly shag haircut. Um, and then we'll get more involved, more education. Uh if there's education that you guys would like to see, like if you know of a brand's education that's out there um, that you'd like to see on this show, let me know. And if you have a brand and you want your education on this show, then reach out to me, Matt at freesaloneducation.com. Let's see what we can do because I'd love to have uh, an even larger library if possible and, and different mixes of brands and everything as well. So let me know what brand you want to see. Tag that brand in the comments. And also uh, this phone number right here is live all the time. So you can text me. Um, what techniques you want to see next on the show. Uh, I'm going to do this show every day, weekdays at noon. So it'll be uh, 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So that's different times for all of you guys. Um, but I think noon is a good time because it's morning in California and it's evening uh, on the other side of the world. So uh, hopefully that's a good time for everybody. And, uh, and if you don't get to watch it, it's always available on our YouTube channel. I want to but I want to make this a, a consistent show, doing it every day, talking to you guys, having a great time, sharing education, uh, and learning from you guys, learning your ideas, what you want to see, all of that stuff. Uh, and obviously, I'll be creating new content, new videos as well. This is just another show, another platform for us to continue to talk together, share together, and all of that stuff. So um, thank you, guys. Thank you, Susan. Um, yeah. Melissa saying Joyco. So there'll be more Joyco stuff. Joyco is definitely on board. Um, and Sam V is on board. They said I have access to their entire library, uh, which is just awesome. So those are brands that for me, um, you know, brands that are looking to support hairdressers are the best. So uh, thanks guys. Thank you so much. Thanks for being a part of the show. Remember, text me. Uh, let me know what you want to see on the show next. Let me know your thoughts on the show, what you think about it. And also if you get a chance Share this video on Facebook, um, whether you take the link from YouTube and share it on Facebook or just hit the share button on Facebook if you're on there. Um, I'd really appreciate that because let's grow this thing. This is, to me, uh, this is going to be fun. I think this is going to be really fun. And the more people we get on it, the better it's going to be. So um, I think, let's see. That's it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All of you guys are awesome. All right. Thanks for hanging in. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow 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 actually look let me know what you want to see have a great day have a great day oh let's do this let's do the exit music it's gonna be a, gonna great, be a great day. day have a great day guys chop it clip it spray it flip it i woke up this way it's gonna be a great day chop it clip it spray it flip it let me show you the way It's gonna be a great day Chop it, flip it, spray it, flip it I woke up this way It's gonna be a great day Chop it, flip it, spray it, flip it Let me show you